In this 67-year-old man, EGD reveals a large ulcerated mass originating from the anterior face of the antrum and involving the lesser curvature. Histology is consistent with high-grade B-cell gastric lymphoma. With retroflexion, it is appreciated that gastric body and fundus are regular. Endoscopic ultrasound, EUS, is then performed for staging. Adequate visualization of the oropharynx should be obtained to ensure a safe intubation of the esophagus with the echo endoscope. Passage through the esophagus is done in a semi-blind fashion due to the oblique endoscopic optic. In the stomach, full endoscopic view is achieved, allowing proper orientation and positioning of the echoendoscope in relation to the lesion of interest. Water filling of the gastric lumen is essential to obtain a good coupling of the ultrasound waves with the gastric layers. Intravenous injection of buscopan or glucagon is also helpful to obtain relaxation of the gastric wall. Moreover, meticulous aspiration of all residual air pockets and mucus are essential for proper ultrasound imaging. Inadequate distension of the gastric wall and or incomplete removal of the gastric content may hamper a correct staging of the tumour. Once water filling has been completed, EUS imaging begins in front of the pylorus. EUS is performed with an electronic radial scanning echo endoscope. The lesion is seen at the 9 o'clock position as a hypoechoic mass infiltrating the gastric wall. The layers are disrupted as typical of lymphoma. The so-called transition zone, i.e. the shift from normal to abnormal wall, must be carefully evaluated on both sides of the lesion to obtain an accurate T-staging. It is noticed that the lesion has infiltrated the second and third layer, mucosa and submucosa, and has extended into the fourth layer, muscularis propria. The fifth layer, serosa, is still preserved. These features are compatible with a T2-stage gastric lymphoma. As gastric lymphoma often presents patchy distribution, the exploration must be completed up to the cardia. For proper visualization of the layers, which are normal in this case, the transducer should be kept in the center of the lumen while withdrawing the echoendoscope. End staging is subsequently performed. For this purpose, scanning is initiated from the second portion of the duodenum to search for perivisceral and perihepatic lymph nodes. In this case, no lymph nodes are visible. Normal pancreatic parenchyma, common bile duct, and portal vein are shown. The procedure is completed with transgastric scanning. The image is demagnified to allow deeper investigation of the perivisceral structures and organs. In this case, no lymph nodes are visible. Normal left hepatic lobe, spleen, pancreatic parenchyma, and celiac trunk are shown. These findings are compatible with an N0 stage gastric lymphoma.
At the end of the procedure, all the water is aspirated from the stomach for the sake of the patient's safety and comfort. In this 58-year-old woman, EGD reveals two large vegetating lesions in the gastric body. Histology was consistent with high-grade B-cell gastric lymphoma. EUS is then performed for staging using an electronic radial scanning echo endoscope. The same technique as before is used to accomplish water filling of the lumen and gastric distension. The lesions extend over two-thirds of the gastric circumference. Upon evaluation of the transition zone, it is appreciated that the gastric wall is infiltrated up to the fifth layer, serosa. The latter is disrupted due to tumoral invasion of the perigastric fat, which is seen as pseudopodia. Care is taken to keep the transducer in the center of the lumen to allow appropriate orthogonal visualization of the entire gastric wall, avoiding incorrect staging that can occur with oblique scanning through the neoplastic areas. At first sight, no clear resection margin is appreciated between the mass and the left lobe of the liver. Close inspection and tissue harmonics allow an optimal discrimination of the layers and tissues with different impedance, revealing that the tumor is contiguous to the liver but is not infiltrating into the parenchyma. As a result, T4 disease is ruled out. Transduodenal scanning fails to reveal any perivisceral lymph node. However, transgastric scanning at the level of the antrum shows a large hypoechoic lymph node outside the greater curvature. This is likely attributable to perigastric extension of the lymphoma. Moreover, multiple small hypoechoic lymph nodes are also visible outside the gastric wall at the 10 o'clock position nearby the outer margin of the largest lesion. Perigastric tumoral invasion appears in close proximity to the lymph nodes. Slight back and forth movements of the echo endoscope allow careful exploration of the whole area and are essential to assess the TN staging correctly. Overall, these findings are compatible with a T3N3 stage gastric lymphoma. Withdrawal of the echo endoscope proximal to the lesions shows additional lymph nodes with pathologic aspect near the liver hilum. As a note of interest, contrast harmonic EUS after intravenous injection of Sonovu is shown. Gastric lymphoma appears diffusely hyperenhanced with a homogeneous pattern. This behavior might prove useful in evaluating the extension of the disease for staging purposes. This is an off-label use of Sonovu and further research is warranted to establish the role of contrast harmonic EUS in gastric lymphoma staging.